Today I will talk about our latest functional. I will explain that it's not the one RDM function. I never claim that for all my functionals. You have to read more carefully my papers, Jersey. I never claim that, never. I always prefer the name National Orbital Functional Approximation. Even I wrote a paper about this in 19, in, in 2018, in an honor of Norman Marsh about the any representability problem of this functional, because we have still, I will demonstrate here that we have still this, uh, okay, this problem of dependence on the two metrics, which was already pointed out by Lodin. Well, this is the motivation. We know that the DFT have many problems still, especially for an efficient description of strongly interacting electron. Our goal, let's say, is achieve a more precise formalis than approximate density functionals. I insist approximate density functionals, but less computational demanding than ab initial wave function based methods. Okay. My general consideration, we consider only an electron at zero temperature. This is a time independent uh, functional theory for the grand state. And this is our Hamiltonian independent of the spin. So we have here H are the matrix element of the kinetic area and standard potential, a one particle part of the Hamiltonian. Brackets are the two electron integrals and the A are the familiar creation and annihilation operator associated with so complete orthonormal a spin orbital set because we don't have dependence on the spin. Then, for any system with a spin different from zero, we have a multiplet, which means we have several state with different projection of the spin, but with the same total spin. Okay, for these systems, I will consider in a general way that they can be described as n particle density matrix statistical operator, which is given by this equation here. Omega is a positive number that some. One, so these are a uh, typical uh, average of the pure state. When you have pure state, then you have only one term. And the energy for, for these systems is well known, it's exact, is a function of the one particle and two particle density metrics, which are given by this equation. These matrices, of course, they satisfy many properties, they are Hermitian, they have no negative diagonal elements, I will, I'm not going into details. And if you contract one more, the two metrics, then you will obtain the one metric. So in general, we can consider that this energy function is a functional and exact functional of the two particle density matrix. So we can take these two metrics as a variable and we can try to obtain the energy by variation of, with respect to these two metrics. But we all know that attempts to determine the energy are complicated due to the lack of a simple set of necessary and sufficient conditions for ensuring that the two matrices correspond to an n particle density matrix, which is a well known the n representability problem for the two metrics. So, in the 70s, these people uh, already suggested let's uh, substitute the second term of the energy, which is a function of the two metrics, by an unknown functional of the one matrix, the electron electron functional here in, in blue. Okay? And this is the demonstration given by Gilbert in 75 for the pure state, by Levy Nater and by Ballon for the ensemble states, that you can obtain this function by some constraining search formalism. This search formalism, what happened with it? Well, you can demonstrate that the function exists, but how to use for practical applications. Well, maybe in some cases, when you have a lattice, you can exploit the translational symmetry, boundary condition, and then you can find an exact function, but only for these special cases. In general, this constraining search is not appropriate for computation. So we have, as far as we know, as this function has been reachable, and we have to set it for approximations. Okay. To do approximation, what we use normally is the representation in which the one matrix is diagonal. Then you have the one matrix in respect of the, the, of the composition of the one matrix. The eigenfunctions are the natural orbitals. The eigenvalues are the occupation numbers. And in this representation, already Coleman found the necessary and sufficient condition for the any representability of the one matrix. The occupation number has to be between zero and one, and the sum has to be equal to n. And the universal function are now in this representation is given by this equation below, where you can obtain the ground state using the variational 
the principle of quantum mechanics. This is an expression given by the uh, consigning shares in this particular representation. The problem appears here. All the functions we have proposed so far are based on this equation in which we propose a parametrization or let's say a reconstruction of the two metrics in terms of some occupation numbers. And yes, you are right. If you do this, you are out of the one reduced density matrix functional theory because you are not reconstructed the two particles, the, the electron electron energy, the complete electron energy. You only reconstruct the two particle density metrics. And this already was pointed out by Lodin in the papers in the 50s and very good paper of Donnelly in 1979 that these kind of approximations still depends on the two particle density metrics. I have wrote everything about this many times. So now the problem is if you want to do this kind of approximation, the best you can obtain is some expression for the energy and behind this expression for the energy, maybe there is an approximate wave function. That is the case of P05, which by the way, is not only for one-to-one -one, uh, coupling. We have extended the P05 when you have many couplings, not only the bonding anti bonding level. So for this um, kind of problems, then you need to worry about the energy representability of the one particle density matter, but also about the energy representability of the function. If you want to obtain some energies with physical meaning, and then because you are reconstructed only the two metrics, this problem is related directly with the energy representability problem of the two metrics. So we have not seen convert the problem we have at the beginning, the exact functional has this problem because the functional, the exact function depends on the two metrics. But if you do this, then in the best case, this reconstruction has to be also any representable. You have to demonstrate that there is some wave function, maybe approximate wave function that justify the, the, the existence of this functional. For the two RDM, I said the complete set of any representability conditions that not depend on the higher order density metrics remains unknown. So what we can do? What can we do with only that tendencies impose some representability condition, for example, the two positive condition, uh, well known as the DQG condition, or you can impose more condition, but how to get the functional impose a more condition, maybe it's a more complicated problem than uh, using the wave function basic methods. So for the moment, what we have done is using some kind of approximation in this form, in, in imposing these conditions. And then the energy maybe is good enough and can compare with the accurate results. Before I explain how we approximate the functional, let's focus on the uh, exact expression of the wave function for the singlex of two electron systems. Here is clear what the problem is. The expression for the wave function you see here depends on the and occupation numbers, natural orbitals, but also you have here some uh, red magnitudes, which are, which can be plus one or minus one, the phases. And then the energy expression depends on the natural orbital, the occupation number, but the exact expression also depends on the choice of these uh, phases. And this is well known. Jersey wrote a paper in 2004, I think, about the uh, phase dilemma. I'm correct, yeah? And then for the natural orbital function for two electron systems, what we discovered, well, wonderful. If you look at the weak correlation regime, really close to the hartree fock um, uh, regime, then you will discover that all in this phase can be uh, taken negative, for example, and only one which correspond to the highest occupation numbers is different, it's positive. And only for the weak correlation regime, what is interesting is we is correlated that also for a strong correlation regime, this function with this uh, fixed phases also works very well. Of course, if you want to look at the Van der Bart interactions, oh, sorry for that. If you want to look at Van der Bart interactions, there are papers in which it's demonstrated that the phases change. You have to alternate the phases and find us something else. So the function is correct or is accurate only when you look at two electron system in the singlet state and practically you will obtain in many regimes 
very accurate result. And this is why the motivation for using electron pairs as basic units. Okay, may I ask a quick question? Is H minus strong correlation or weak correlation? Is, well, is H minus, minus strong minus. correlation or weak correlation? You have only one electron there. And H minus. H minus. I, hydrogen atom. I don't know. Ah, H2 minus. Ah, no, H minus. H minus. Ah, you have two electrons and only one. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I never calculated this. I, okay. I, can, I have to think about that. I can tell you that uh, same pattern of the dimension. Yeah, it's wrong. Oh, no, I agree. I expected that because it's for these two systems in the, I don't know, H minus, I have to think what about the strong or not. I say that it's very accurate functional for molecule for many atoms. I don't say that this is a sad functional because the face of problem is there. This is what I'm saying now. This is correct. Even for this system, it's so difficult to find a functional. That's correct. Exactly. If we use this functional, we know we don't know how to change to all representation. No, no, you can't do it with this square, but this not correspond to anything. Manifestation of a dependence of a functional on two electron integrals because yeah. phase depends on two electron integrals. So if you minimize things correctly, which of course is a prohibitively expensive thing. Let's see. Right yes, I already said here, we eliminate this dependence. We take this linear dependence. It's an approximation. We don't look for a holy grail. You are looking for a holy grail for the exact functional, okay? Or better functional only in terms of, of the one at the end. For the moment, we don't have this, only for the Hattrick fork. That's it. I agree with you. It will, it will not work for the H minus, okay? But it will work for many things as many uh, wave function approximation work for many things, couple of cross for, for God's sake, for many things it works, but when you dissociate two atoms, couple of cross fails, okay? But everybody use couple of cross as a gold standard in quantum chemistry. This is the problem. Of course, we don't know how to, to express the function in terms of the one at the end. And this is a typical, as you say, Thomas, this is the, 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 the demonstration that we only have a functional but it depends still on the phases. So this function still depends on the two metrics. I agree. This is not a real function. It's just a genuine function of the one at the end. Okay. But it still is accurate for many systems in a single state for two electrons. And this is why we use it as a basic Unix and propose it some reconstruction for the important um, spin components of the two metrics. I don't go into details how we spread this two metrics in terms of the occupation numbers. We did, and we obtained this function, pen of five, pen of six, pen of seven, but they are good for many problems in the static correlation. Now I will focus on this latest function, you know, which seems to manage in a better way or in a more balanced way, the static and um, dynamic correlation. This is a functional, it's a still a GKL functional, the functional, well, we cannot see here. The energy can be split in the two terms. The first thing is the sum of the pair energies, which is the sum of this intra pair, uh, this, the, the energy here is the sum of these two terms, the intra energy and the inter pair energy. The intra pair energy is just a sum of the functional I just show you for the two electron system. And for the inter pair, we have the typical Hattrick term and two terms dependence of the L integral, which is the, the responsible for the uh, exchange and time inversion correlation, the correlation between spins, between two electrons with opposite spins. Here we have two terms. The first term depends on the dynamical part of the occupation number, which is given by this expression. This expression I took from nowhere. I mean, it's just following the polite criterion that the occupation numbers which are close to one and zero is responsible for the dynamic correlation, when you have the occupation number close to one to a half, then this will give you zero. And the part here, the particle hole symmetry conserved by the last term, proportional to occupation number and holes with this square root, 
is the static uh, term that uh, will give you important magnitudes when the occupation number are close to one half. And this is the function, only a simple expression in terms of the GKL integral and all the uh, occupation numbers, practical square root given by the two electron systems uh, functional. In the case of spin, I will say only one comment. We focus on the world multiplet. This means that I don't care about the projection because we know that all the states that compound the, uh, the multiplet have the same energy. But the important fact here is that the expectation value for a zeta is equal to zero. So in principle, we can use a spin restricted theory even for those systems when you have spin different from zero and you can keep or you can conserve the total spin of the system. But with this expression, if you use a spin restricted theory, you can use also the world machinery you have, we have already implemented for singlet states. And this is a, a great advantage. And then you also keep conserving the total spin. This is a, the, the important difference of this formula. Now it's time for some uh, results. Well, here is the MP2 result, okay? And then the Genoff result comparing to the coupled closest single and double side triplet for a set of 55 molecules in different spin state. As I remember, 30 singlex and 25 uh, multiplex. We don't see any uh, particular difference depending on the spin. And you can see that for these molecules, at least for these molecules, we reduce the uh, difference with respect to the MP2. So it's closer to the coupled closest single and double side triplet. Even for atoms, we have calculated with this aumented uh, triple Z basis set, and you obtain the uh, energy for these atoms where not, it's not important uh, the, the spin uh, violation by coupled plot because these calculations are unrestricted. It is very small. Our calculation concerns the total spin, and you take a difference with respect to these values in uh, lesser than one millihatry. Now, of course, typically we study the uh, dissociation on some dimers. These dimers uh, here, these are relative energies in the infinite. We have taken the energy of this uh, system at separation between atoms of 10 Armstrongs. And you can see that we can describe, I will now show you some, some qualities of this curve. This uh, here in the equilibrium, of course, you have single, double, and triple bonds. And at the uh, same top, of course, you have a lot of degenerated states depending on the atoms we are studying. It's quite difficult to describe this system, especially for heteronuclear system, because DFT, or at least density functional approximation we use today, normally give you fractional uh, charge at the infinite. We always obtain a uh, correct number of electrons at the infinite for the atoms were separated. These are the uh, some property of this curve. You can observe that we tend to uh, obtain a lesser equilibrium distance. No, we underestimate the equilibrium distance, and practically all the time we slightly overestimate the uh, the frequencies. So we obtain very more narrow. What, what is the basis charge? Triple set. Triple set. Oh, I don't, this is a triple set, a CC of Duny, triple set basis. And you observe that the, the binding energies are pretty good. I want to emphasize now that we obtain this result not only for the relative energy, also but the, for the total energy. This is a comparison for CO with CASPT2. And you observe that we also obtain quite a, a pretty good uh, curve, potential energy curve for this system, not only for relative value, also for the total energies. So I want to believe that we obtain good results for the good reasons. But of course, this is an approximation. Now, let me show you some results for some challenging systems. I want to show you the dissociation of these four systems compound, composed by 10 hydrogen atoms. This is a 1D change to, to these systems and one pyramid 3D system. This is all these studies are in the minimal basis set because we want to compare with food CI. So here in, in red will be always the food CI result or very accurate result. 
in, in case we cannot do it full CI. In black, we all will appear our result with this new functional. The brown curve is corresponding to the our previous function penal sieving, which is able to describe very well asymptote, but not the equilibrium region as you say here. And also we compare with the variation to at the end imposing only two particle uh, in a representability condition. The same condition we imposed to obtain the expression for our functional. But anyway, we use only two index approximation. So in some way we have uh, obtaining energy above the uh, full CI result. With the variation to at the end, you obtain uh, quite below, you will see for all the system uh, energies. This is the result. We wanted to see what happened if we increase the, the system, not only the linear change with 10 atoms, but also with 50 atoms. And you see the result is not deteriorate with the increasing of the systems. This is the result obtained by Maciotti, I think, for the two RDM variation method imposing only two at the end, or maybe by the prints, I don't remember now. Now, this is before I show you the two day systems. I want to show you the 3D system. For the 3D system, I show you here, pen of sieving in brown is going down there. Then you observe how quite below is the energies of the variation at the end imposing only two particle condition, but I included in this uh, figure also the uh, result for the variation at the end imposing three particle conditions. Even for these systems, when you impose three particle condition, the energy goes Behind uh, below the behind the 1.5 Armstrong, they go below and predict all this method an equilibrium uh, quite below, quite behind the, the, the result for FUCI, which is uh, about 1.46 Armstrong. And we obtain a result in the equilibrium about the 1.41 Armstrong. Also, we increase the systems. This is the result obtained for the cube with 64 hydrogen atoms. We also studied the dissociation, the symmetric dissociation of this cube. Of course, for this large system, we don't have a reliable, a reliable curve to compare, but you observe how below is the curve with the variation toward the end, and we obtain the equilibrium between hartree fock and MP2 curve, which is the direct curve. Now, for this system, we have studied the transition for the metal to insulator, I'm practically finished. The metal to insulator transition, because the H64 is a paradigmatic, uh, let's say, example or model for most insulator. When you stretch the distance between ions and atoms, then you know that the uh, electron will be fixed at atoms. And to study this transition, we have calculated the average of all of the ional elements of the one at the end, but in the atomic basis set. We know when you stretch the distance between the adjacent atoms, this magnitude, the atomic basis set, the off diagonal elements should go to zero. And then if you have a multi insulator or this, and you can also set the metal to insulator transition, it's well known that you have to take this curve. Here I show you the curve for the two RDN variational method and our curve. I have to say that this behavior is also observed in a smaller, um, in clusters where the full CI calculation have been done and our curve is below or is a on the um, lower bound of the variation to add the end result. To finish, let me finish with the problem we found for two D system. When you increase uh, the spatial dimension of the systems, then you know the dissociation is more complex and the two D systems are challenging for any method in quantum chemistry or in physics. So here, in principle, we obtain the same behavior for the variation at the end, Genov and full CI, practically the same. We also recover correctly the dynamic correlation with respect to penicillin, but you also observe here something different at this point in 1.4. The curve for our Genov is continuous, but the, the, the derivative is not continuous anymore. And the same happens for the uh, to the sheet. Here are the all results, also including the three particle uh, and a representability condition for the, to, um, the variation toward the end method. You observe that our 
curves above the full CI result, all these methods, uh, even when you impose three particle condition are below, when you go behind the 1.5 antrons for the sheet. And, uh, but we also observe here that in this point about 1.5, we obt uh, obtain some discontinuity for the derivative. And this is related because related with, uh, with we cannot uh, with our functional obtain a smooth uh, transition between the solution we obtain at the asymptote, which is practically static correlation. When you move to the equilibrium region, then you obtain another solution. For the linear change, no problem. The smooth transition is uh, obtaining. Here I show you the occupancy for the lowest strongly occupied natural orbital to demonstrate that there are two solutions in our method. For the linear change, this transition is okay, no problem. This is why we don't obtain this continuity. But for the sheet, we observe that the solution close, well, when you are below the 1.5 Armstrong between adjusting atoms, then you obtain a solution with occupation number quite close to two. This is a partial uh, orbitals. But for all the system, you obtain the correct values, but here you observe the discontinuity. This is why this is a, a problem. So there is a room for improvement. If we want to obtain better results, we have to propose another way to, to describe the intermediate region when the static and the uh, dynamic correlation compete. This is difficult for any method. And here is the same, especially when you have two the systems. All these calculations have been done with Dunov. Dunov is available in the GitHub. So you can download. Now you can optimize geometry. You can do many things with this kind of functional, natural orbital functional approximation, not one are the main functionals. I'm sorry for that. Uh, to message, uh, to take home, only to message, where when you have approximate functional, it's still dependence is there of the two RDM. So the functional responsibility has to be imposed if you want to obtain some uh, approximate results. And in the case of you know, you can recover more or less in a balanced way the dynamic and static correlation. And thank you for your attention.